SpaceX is launching into 2022 with by far their most ambitious project yet, getting Starship into orbit and back down to Earth successfully. And not just doing it once to prove a point, but reaching a launch and landing frequency of once every two weeks by the end of 2022. And there is a spectacular amount of work to be done in that short time, but if it pays off, then SpaceX unlocks the capability to do pretty much anything they want in space. Fly to the moon, fly to Mars, deploy 40,000 new Starlink satellites, put a cyber truck on the surface of Europa. The potential for SpaceX in the coming years is so far beyond anything we have ever seen before that it's basically going to be science fiction come true. It's not going to be easy though. So today we're going over all of the work that SpaceX is putting in to overcome humanity's single greatest obstacle and make life as we know it multiplanetary. Elon Musk has been talking a lot about Starship recently, and he's been towing a very careful line between getting people hyped for the future and acknowledging that this project is going to be very far from easy. During his Q&A session at the CEO Council Summit in December, Elon responded to a question on how Starship progress was going by saying, Starship is a hard, 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 hard project. Of course, the goal of that project being a fully reusable super heavy lift rocket that can not only deliver massive amounts of payload to Earth's orbit, but can also deliver to other planets in our solar system, even transport large crews of 20 people to the moon and to Mars, and then bring them home again. All of this with a two-stage rocket that is 100% reusable with no refurbishment time in between, just land, refuel, and launch again. Elon Musk summed it up pretty well by saying, it is so preposterously difficult that there are times where I wonder whether we can actually do this. And he even admits that right now, Starship is absorbing more of his mental energy than any other single thing. And we know full well that Elon has a lot of different things on his mind these days. We also got a glimpse of how seriously Elon takes this whole thing when a very critical email from himself to the SpaceX staff leaked in late November. In his note, Elon stressed that production of the company's Raptor engine was in crisis, and he feared the worst if SpaceX can't figure out how to build a large supply of reliable engines. Musk wrote to staff, We face genuine risk of bankruptcy if we cannot achieve a Starship flight rate of at least once every two weeks next year. The Raptors are so key to Starship because the super heavy booster that gets the ship into space with its 100 ton cargo needs 33 of these engines to reach full potential, plus 6 more on the Starship second stage. And we know that it's pretty likely there will be a couple of explosive failures before SpaceX can stick the landing of both the booster and the ship. So dozens of these engines will be destroyed in the process for sure. It could even add up to hundreds of scrapped Raptors if this proves to be as difficult as Elon has suggested it could get. SpaceX needs that many engines to support Starship's gigantic size, and Starship needs to be so gigantic in size to enable it to be fully reusable. Elon also talked about this in his CEO Council speech. Basically, the typical orbital rocket can put about 2% of its liftoff mass into orbit. So if you picture a Falcon 9 ready to launch, out of that whole big rocket full of propellant and cargo, only 2% of that weight can actually make it all the way into orbit. You can make that Falcon 9 bigger and go to a Falcon Heavy, but it's still only getting 2% of that larger mass into orbit. Elon says Starship needs to be at least double that percentage. Quote, to my knowledge, no rocket has ever lifted 4% of its liftoff mass to orbit, adding that in order to make a rocket fully reusable, you've got to basically create a rocket that can do about 4%, if not more than 4% of its mass to orbit, which hasn't happened before. Before we continue, I'd like to take a few moments to tell you about our sponsor that is helping plant trees around the world, Established Titles. 
Established Titles is a project based on the historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. By purchasing one square foot of dedicated land, you can call yourself a lord or lady based on this historic tradition. In return, Established Titles commits to planting a tree with every order to help protect the pristine woodlands of Scotland and supporting global charities such as One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. Your title pack will give you one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Ordally, Aberdeenshire, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest with your unique plot number. This is a great way to surprise a friend, partner, or family member and makes for a fun gift, especially with Christmas coming up. This is a fun way to help conservation efforts in Scotland and around the world and helping the planet is important to us and the channel. So click on the link in the description of the video and head to established titles and use code TESLASPACE for an additional 10% off during their holiday sale for yourself or someone you know. And let's get back to the video. Even with all of that talk about how impossibly difficult it will be to fly the Starship, Elon is still talking very optimistically about being able to try it for the first time as soon as January 2022 and making a dozen Starship flights next year alone. Elon says that the only limiting factor right now is regulatory approval. The FAA needs to give the go-ahead first before SpaceX can launch Starship to orbit from Starbase. In mid-November, the FAA posted an estimated completion date for their study of December 31st, 2021. The FAA first released a draft review of the Starbase assessment on September 17th and asked the public to provide comments about it through to November 1st. The agency announced that it had received more than 17,000 written comments about the document during this stretch. Meanwhile, on the ground at Starbase, there has been a lot going on. The company has been working constantly on the three primary features of the orbital launch pad, the tank farm, launch, and launch mount. This is all unprecedented stuff that is probably just as complex and revolutionary as the Starship itself. A usual rocket launch tower and mount is a fairly passive structure. It holds the rocket upright and provides an anchor point to attach the various hoses and cables and walkways to the ship. That's about it. At Starbase, the launch tower and mount are fully automated and mechanical units that contain vital systems for the ship launch. The mount does more than just hold the booster and spray water on the engine exhaust. The Starbase mount actually has robotic clamps that extend out to grab the booster and each clamp has a connection point to the outer ring of booster engines to prime them for ignition. The pumps used to spool up the rocket engines before launch are typically integrated into the booster stage on other rockets, but SpaceX has moved them off of the ship and into the launch table, which will save them a bunch of weight that can be used for cargo. Then all of the connection points between the launch table and the booster will automatically retract behind covers at the moment of liftoff so that nothing gets damaged by the fire and can be quickly reused. It's little things like that that contribute to Elon's goal of increasing the orbital payload percentage for the vehicle. We've also at this point seen pretty well how the robotic arm system on the Starship launch tower is going to work. For now, the arms will be responsible for lifting and stacking the booster and ship stages onto the launch mount, while a third robotic arm connects to the plumbing in the ship stage and prepares it for launch. Eventually, the robot arms will catch the booster and the ship as they come in for a landing, but that is definitely not happening with the first orbital launch and probably won't until we can get a better idea of how these rockets perform during a controlled ground landing. The other area where SpaceX is making good steady progress is with proofing tests on the orbital Starship S-20, and now finally the booster B-4. Back in August, SpaceX brought both of the vehicles out and stacked them on top of each other for the first time, and it honestly looked amazing. But after that, they both went back to the hangars, and we didn't see much activity on either for a few months. Then in November, they started rolling the Starship out for testing. We've already seen a few cryoproofing tests for previous Starship models. It went badly one time and the ship crumpled like a can, 
but since then we've seen that the fixes have been made and Starship holds up just fine to cryogenic temperatures. The big event came on November 12th, when SpaceX conducted the first static fire test of all six Raptor engines in the Starship. Prior to this, the most they had ever lit up at once was just three Raptors. So that indicates that the upper stage should be more or less flight certified at this point. Now it's time for the booster. The B4 has just been returned to the orbital launch mount for the first time in months. This is the first time the B4 prototype will undergo testing, but SpaceX have already completed successful cryoproofing and static fire of three engines with the previous B3 model, so we know that the design can at least hold up to the basic stress test. What we don't know is what's going to happen when they start lighting off more dense concentrations of Raptors. The booster currently has 29 engines packed into the same basic diameters of the ship's six engines. So this is going to be a very different kind of test. No other liquid rocket stage in history has a more densely packed thrust section than the Super Heavy, averaging at least 85 tons of thrust per square meter of available engine space. So just getting this thing to fire up on its own without exploding is going to be a major achievement. Getting it to lift off with a gigantic upper stage ship on top of it is going to be outrageous. Moving on to some more optimistic predictions, Elon Musk was talking a bit about SpaceX going to the moon and Mars in his recent interview with Time Magazine for the Person of the Year award. Elon said that he expects Starship will be able to do a loop around the moon as soon as 2023 and land on the moon's surface within three years. The loop around the moon that he mentions is likely a reference to the Dear Moon trip that was outlined in 2018, which will send Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maizawa and a group of passengers on a tour around the moon. The six-day voyage will take three days to get to the moon and three to come back. The Starship is also expected to land humans on the moon as part of the NASA Artemis project. The agency's administrator, Bill Nelson, indicated in November that the mission would likely occur no earlier than 2025, and many signs point to an even longer delay than that. Elon obviously knows about the Artemis delays fully well, so when he says landing on the moon's surface within three years, he must be talking about a SpaceX-specific mission. Maybe a sort of product demonstration, just to show the world what the Starship is truly capable of by going to the moon on its own and landing there. In another recent presentation, this time with the US National Academies of Science, Elon talked about the potential for human activity on the moon, saying, quote, Starship has the ability of transporting enough mass and people to the moon to actually have a permanently occupied base on the moon, much as we have a permanently occupied base at Antarctica. Then there is, of course, Mars. In his Time Magazine interview, Elon Musk said, I'll be surprised if we're not landing on Mars within five years, which would line up with an Earth to Mars transit window that will open in 2026. Elon has also recently said that SpaceX would send at least two or three uncrewed starships to Mars that would demonstrate the ship could land safely on the planet. This all paves the way for Elon's long-term goal to build a 1 million strong city on Mars by 2050, which is still going to be wildly optimistic, even if everything goes according to plan over the next five years or so, but that's what we are building up to right now. What do you guys think? What year do we send humans to Mars? I'd love to say the 2030s is when it'll happen, but even that starts to sound insane when you really think about all the little details that need to get worked out, but we'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Again, guys, quick reminder to check out the link in the description and head to established titles and use code TESLASPACE for an additional 10% off during their holiday sale for yourself or someone you know. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content.
As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.